welcome to another episode of Business PNG. Tonight we're in beautiful Kokopo, East New Britain province, the setting for the third Pacific Island Regional Initiative Leaders Roundtable. Now, the overarching theme is digital financial services in the face of de-risking. Digital financial services include mobile banking, online banking, FPOS agents, and so forth. Services that are gradually becoming popular with island countries. Central bank governors and representatives from financial institutions around the Pacific gathered in Kokopo, East New Britain last week for the third annual Pacific Islands Regional Initiative Leaders Roundtable. The two-day meeting was hosted by the Central Bank of Papua New Guinea and the Alliance for Financial Inclusion, or AFI, based in Kuala Lumpur. The agenda is mainly around financial inclusion and financial um, uh, services, how to promote uh, looking at products, our journeys of uh, how we evolve uh, financial inclusion in our respective countries. So that's, that's the agenda. The Pacific Islands Regional Initiative is a regional body created to better address the unique constraints to increasing financial inclusion in the Pacific. Now in the meeting, discussion centered on de-risking, which is having a huge impact on smaller Pacific Island countries that are remittance-based, as it is also an impediment to increasing access to basic financial services in the Pacific. Uh, we, last year I made a commitment uh, in Vanuatu to put my hand up for us to host this one, and I promised them that we will not have it in Port Mosby. Members of PIRI include the central banks of Fiji, Samoa, Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, Papua New Guinea, Timor-Leste and Tonga. At the same meeting, the Center for Excellence in Financial Inclusion, along with its partners, launched a gender equity and social inclusion policy for microfinance institutions. The policy is designed to improve financial inclusion by strengthening PNG's financial sector and to close the gender gap in financial inclusion. According to the central bank, an estimated 70 to 75 percent of the total population is excluded from access to the formal financial sector. Currently, only 40 percent of adults have a deposit and transaction account, and a lack of access to financial services for women compared to that of men is particularly dire. The bank's overall goal at the beginning of the first National Financial Inclusion Strategy 2014-2015 was to bank 1 million more unbanked low-income people, and 50% of those 1 million new deposit or transaction accounts should be owned by women. At the end of the first strategy period, more than 1.2 million new deposit accounts were opened. However, the percentage of new accounts opened and owned by women was only 26%. Now, the policy itself uh, uh, stems from uh, two main uh, initiatives. One is the, the SPIRI, when, we host, uh, when Fiji hosted this uh, uh, AFI annual forum last year in Denarau, they We made a commitment to bridge the gap on gender. And out of that policy or that commitment, we, now, uh, we are the first one to come up with a policy uh, particularly relating to gender. So, and then also it's coming out also from the, the government policy on uh, gender equity. So the government has a policy, I think it's um, implemented by the Department of Community Development. But that, uh, um, the policy also is deriving a lot of some of the things or lessons from that particular government policy. Therefore, the development of the gender equity and social inclusion policy for microfinance institutions is a milestone towards full implementation of the Denarau Action Plan, a 10-point action plan committed to gender and women's financial inclusion. So it's, uh, uh, the commitments uh, by the microfinance institutions is very, very strong. They, they are committed to implementing it and uh, we look forward to you know, uh, achieve the target of you know, narrowing the gap between uh, males and females in Papua New Guinea. The policy is a flagship initiative by the Center for Excellence in Financial Inclusion, the Asian Development Bank, and the governments of Australia and Papua New Guinea. Coming up on the show, Papua New Guinea's financial inclusion journey. I'm Mirabel Tulo, and you're watching Business PNG.
Financial inclusion or the process of banking the unbanked as it has come to be known is a tedious process in countries like ours where approximately 80% of our population live in rural areas. Financial inclusion is fundamental to all economies and it is a process that the central bank with its partners have been undergoing from remote areas like the Sak Valley in Enga down to the villages along the Rai Coast in Medang and across the rest of the country. No. An estimated 85% of the population in Papua New Guinea does not have access to financial services. The low-income population of the country are termed as core excluded in terms of the extent of financial exclusion as they conduct their financial transactions completely outside the regulated financial system, mostly on a cash-only basis and sometimes in kind. Amongst the several causes of financial exclusion, the primary ones are high costs associated with small value transactions, lack of infrastructure and lack of client-centric products, rigid processes and weak delivery models. Financial inclusion is a major agenda of development right across the globe, with financial illiteracy a serious hindrance to positive development. Financial inclusion is the process of ensuring access to appropriate financial products and services needed by all sections of the society in general, in particularly vulnerable groups such as the rural population and low-income groups. Our lessons, uh, our experience is that uh, uh, financial education has been the biggest component and a very important component of financial education or financial inclusion in Papua New Guinea and many more um, private and public uh, institutions and uh, companies are offering that service to uh, the great majority of our population. Having access to the right financial advice and understanding when and how much to spend, given the different community obligations, is vital in our traditional society. Decent work and economic growth is eighth on the United Nations list of sustainable development goals. The central bank, along with development donors, the Australian government and the Asian Development Bank, are undertaking some interventions, including the development of microfinance, promoting mobile and electronic banking, the national payment system, financial literacy programs, microinsurance and other private sector initiatives on financial inclusion, which are also aimed at increasing financial services access and increased competency of financial users. In terms of uh, building a necessary infrastructure that is required to implement and progress uh, financial inclusion uh, programs in our respective economies. The infrastructure here, I mean in terms of getting the necessary legislations, in terms of getting the necessary policies. Uh, in Papua New Guinea, we have, uh, uh, passed the, we have a, a payment, national payment system that is passed by government and it provides a, a platform for enhancing financial inclusion in Papua New Guinea. We have also microbanks, which is another infrastructure needed to pursue financial inclusion and financial education throughout Papua New Guinea. Such initiatives include the bank's role educating the younger generation to be financially competent citizens in PNG. The central bank, as part of the National Financial Inclusion and Financial Literacy Strategy, is liaising with the Department of Education to introduce financial education into the school curriculum, from primary and secondary schools, to nurture a savings culture at the early age and to teach children how to make informed financial decisions. Financial education has been carried out by the responsible organization, the Center for Excellence in Financial Inclusion, from places varying from Sak Valley in the Anga province to villages along Rai Coast in Medang. Coming up on the show, New Britain Palm Oil Limited, 50 years in Papua New Guinea. New Britain Palm Oil Limited this year marks their 50th anniversary in Papua New Guinea. The company was first incorporated in the country in 1967 and has since grown into the largest private sector employer in the country. West New Britain province, home of the oil palm and for the past 50 years, home of palm oil giant New Britain Palm Oil Limited. 
This year, the company marks their 50th anniversary in Papua New Guinea, first incorporated in the country in 1967, and has since grown into the largest private sector employer in the country. Over the 50 years, uh, we started off in, in 1967 with just uh, sort of two and a half thousand hectares of oil palm um, at Baberi and also at Dami Research Station, where the, the initial plant, uh, plant breeding material was brought in from Malaysia. And uh, so we expanded, that was going to be our seed production business. Um, and we started initially with uh, what was called Project Genesis uh, with the Berry Plantation here. And then, so where we are now, 50 years later, um, 40,000 hex hectares here in West New Britain. To celebrate the company's golden jubilee, National Airline and New Guinea has branded their Fokker 70 called Hoskins with the NBPOL 50 years logo. The logo on the F-70 signifies the cooperation and support between both organizations throughout the years. NU Guinea General Manager Customers and Markets, Dominic Kaumu, congratulated NBPOL recently at the unveiling of the logo and thanked them for their contribution to NU Guinea's success. Despite the country's economic setbacks, the company has managed to keep their head above water while navigating through critical economic times and harsh drops in commodity prices. General Manager Harry Brock credits consistency when telling NBPOL success story. We're an agricultural commodity, so we uh, ride the good times and, and stick out the, the, the tougher times. Um, and I think, uh, you know, I think with our business model um, and, and, the, and, and the fact that we're, we're engaged uh, throughout the community has, has enabled us to, 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 to stick together. Um, the last few three or four years have not been terribly easy. Um, prior to that, we had some good times, um, but it's it's just the fact that uh, we've been very consistent in what we do and how we approach things um, throughout the whole length of this 50-year period. And we stick to what we know. We stick to our core business, and uh, and I think that's seen us that's seen us through. The company has recently invested in biogas facilities to reduce their costs of operation, which is significantly cheaper than burning diesel. NBPOL then resells some of the biogas to PNG Power, which provides the SOE with a cheaper supply of power. Biogas typically refers to the mixture of different gases produced by a breakdown of organic matter. Now, in this case, methane is produced by mill effluents or mill waste. We've uh, evolved into sort of uh, biogas production, um, so we now supply the Kimby grid with about a megawatt of power, about 20% of their power requirements, and looking to do much, much more of that, and I think you'll see some, some footage of, of, of what we're doing with the biogas there. At present, New Britain Palm Oil supplies one megawatt of electricity to the PNG power grid from their Mossa and Combago biogas sites. Now this offers a clean and green and sustainable source of energy and this is ideal for future generations as well as the environment. Coming up on the show, IPA waivers fees for Bougainville businesses. I'm Leanne Girari in Port Moresby and you're watching Business PNG. The Investment Promotion Authority of Papua New Guinea has applied waiver on penalty fees for the reinstatement of companies that were deregistered or defunded and removed from the list of registered entities under the Register of Companies. Acting Managing Director Clarence Malahot on June 1 this year made this announcement in Buka following the decision effected by the IPA Board with special considerations that Bougainville went through a civil war. This comes as a result of awareness conducted by the team last year in Buin, Arawa and Buka that revealed that a thousand plus company were deregistered due to non-compliance with the filing of company annual returns. The waiver applies to companies that were deregistered from years 1989 to 2015. For one thing, I think Bougainville has gone through um hard time um, since the crisis. Uh, it then affected businesses who could not do business because of the environment here. Uh, and as such, 
the cost to uh, since not operating, there have been um, strike of the list of registered entities by the register of companies, and this this approach is now to assist those businesses to get them back onto the registered list of companies. The cost of rehabilitating businesses in the autonomous region of Bougainville looks promising with the economic development predicted to be elevating the revenue margins and the Investment Promotion Authority believes this decision will help to improve Bougainville's internal revenue. As you know, if I give you an example, a company that has not been operating for 10 years to pay an annual lodgement fee of 300 kina plus a late fee of 1,000 kina that company, having not operated for 10 years, for it to comply and get back on the registered list of companies, it will cost them about 13,000 kina. And the board feels that this is money that should be given back, should be left to the businesses to do their operations. So the decision now waivers the 1,000 kina fee for every year uh, to assist businesses, especially companies, come back and comply. Uh, and get on with doing business. I think the second thing is it's also important that these businesses are assisted and they get back uh, on track so they can get involved in the economic activities of, uh, of the region uh, and contribute through uh, taxation both in uh, Bougainville and in Papua New Guinea as a whole uh, and also create employment opportunities for our youth. Uh, as you know, um, the gap of 10 years has left a lot of our youths being unable to go to school and they need these opportunities to be uh, to be offered to them as a form of assistance to get them back in the formal economy. From IPA's records, over 900 companies are currently operational and the over 1,000 are deregistered or defunded in the autonomous region of Bougainville. There are also other business entities such as business names totaling to over 4,000. Uh, and then in accordance to our records, we have a total of 25, 25, 21 companies, foreign companies, that are supposed to be operating in Bougainville. Uh, in terms of business groups, we have about 135 uh, business names, 4,400 companies, uh, business names. Uh, these are trading names. And then associations in terms of uh, non-government and non-profit uh, groups, we have a total of about 95. Uh, here in Bougainville. Uh, these figures are straight of the um, Investment Promotion Authority uh, 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 registry uh, in Port Mosby. While companies in the autonomous region of Bougainville have welcomed this announcement, same time have thanked the Investment Promotion Authority for realizing the potential of business practices. President of the Bougainville Town Business Association, who is the owner for San Kamap Exports, Robert Critchley says this decision has given reassurance and confidence to businesses in the autonomous region of Bougainville. That positively help us uh, get, a, get us back on our feet. It will definitely help out um, establishing, re-establishing and establishing new and old businesses in Bougainville and then in turn uh, produce more revenue into Bougainville and uh, help our great region get back on our feet and become economically stable for the future. Uh, so I think that it's important that companies and business people uh, comply. Uh, for one thing, uh, the government, the business community and the people should all work together. When businesses pay taxes and when they provide the training to our people, they are helping develop the region. When the government collects the taxes, the government puts it back into the into the community uh, and develop infrastructure and other social services that are required uh, by the people of Bougainville. The Investment Promotion Authority is now calling on companies and business name owners to contact the IPA head office in Port Mosby and the regional office in Buka to facilitate the reinstatement of the entities. Well, two things mainly. Firstly, I think it's, uh, everyone should get uh, should formalize their uh, their status in terms of company registration, uh, and then pay the dues in terms of taxation. Huh? Uh, as as a pro as a normal process, every company that comes to register with the IPA is expected 
to then apply for a tax identification number from the Internal Revenue Commission and be able to pay their taxes when they are due. Uh, because at the end of the day, these are the taxes that the government will again use to provide the, the much needed services to the people of this region and, and in Papua New Guinea. <laughs> That's all we have for this episode of Business PNG. Thank you for watching. For more information, or if you'd like to watch this episode again, visit MTV online at the URL at the bottom of the screen, or to simply join the conversation, like our page on Facebook, or follow us on the Twitter handle at Business PNG. Until next time, have a pleasant evening. I'm Leanne Girari, and this was Business PNG.